So I had a hard time figuring out how to start this one. Because a lot of you probably already saw the trailer. Part of you already saw maybe Critical Drinkers Breakdown. Maybe you saw Tim Pool discuss the trailer. Friday Night Tights, so on and so forth. It's my turn. It's my turn to say, what the living hell did I see? What the living hell did I witness? And I'm in the camp. I think it's more likely than not that they're going to kill off Indy and just give it over to Phoebe Waller-Bridge. If they don't just kill off Indy, they are going to more or less have Indy retire in a very stupidly way. And Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to take over. Either way you cut it, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to take over. She's going to be a very central point to the story. Because they, they're trying to get you with the member berries. It's very obvious. They are trying to get you with the member berries. And I, I'm going to this bounding article because this bounding article does a very good job. And we're not going to read through the bounding article because this is me ranting. This is me wanting to vent and explain how disgusted I was. Because I just needed to see the trailer once to know that it made no sense. And we're just going to we're, we're going to use a few just a few things from this bounding article. And yet another example that Disney holds no respect for the legacy of the numerous IPs they've assimilated over the years. The first trailer for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, horrible name, seems to suggest that the world's most famous archaeologist has forgotten his own past adventures. And it's very freaking obvious. It's obvious to anybody that watched that trailer. That it makes no sense. They have awful jokes. CGI horseback riding. They hide Indy's face a whole lot. On those stunts and everything. That he's very far back. You can't really see his face. Or he's kind of blurred out. So he could be CGI the whole time. Stunt doubles. Things of that nature. You know Harrison Ford. We still don't know how the movie's going to be. We're, we're only projecting. And predicting right now. But Harrison Ford. Decided to do. The ne the Force Awakens? Yeah, Force Awakens. Solely to do this movie that he had so hard of time pulling off. Because he liked Indiana Jones. He thought of it as a as his as his 007, as his James Bond, as America's James Bond. Even though James Bond is James Bond, not Indiana Jones is Indiana Jones. Two very different styles, but he viewed it as that. He likes Indy. He was willing to kill off a character that he hated for this movie. I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it, Harrison. <laughs> because honestly, I don't think you care. I I don't. We're, we're going to go with one line real quick. This is Salah to Indy. I miss the desert and waking up every morning wondering what wonderful adventures the new day will bring us. Those days have come and gone. The tired explorer replies to his old friend. Yeah, that, that was in that that was my impression of Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones, because it kind of sounds like that. Old, decrepit, and tired. Perhaps Salah replies. Perhaps not. Man, his God, John Rice Davis, please don't. All this is just breaking my heart because they're doing member berries. And the reason why I did that was because it's nothing more than a member berry. Remember Salah? Remember, remember, 
Remember Raiders? Yeah, I remember. Remember Last Crusade? Oh, I remember. Remember Kingdom of... Oh, don't remember Kingdom of the Crystal Scroll. Remember... Oh, what was the second one? God, why am I forgetting that? Kingdom of Doom? No. Somebody will remind me in the chat what the name was, but it, it's nothing but member berries and flashbacks and d young, de-aged Harrison that looks so awkward. But through this all, because all it is is nothing more than a few lines of dialogue, very crap joke, where you have Phoebe Waller-Bridge's Helena and Indy going like, Helena saying, oh, he's nobody, he's nobody, he's nobody that important. And he says, I'm her godfather. Awful joke. But you also get this line. I don't believe in magic, but a few times in my life, I've seen things. Things I can't explain and I've come to believe it's not so much what you believe, it's how hard you believe it. Might I remind you, and literally, Last Crusade. Well, no, let's not go back to Last Crusade. Well, I'm thinking real quick. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade. I think Indiana Jones, yeah. First Indiana Jones, because I'm memories are, names are escaping me right now, and I'm getting them all mixed up. In the first one, he literally sees the wrath of God enacted upon people when they open up the freaking, why is it escaping my name? And they say it here, give me a moment. Uh, so the film Billy just we were the first three. At this point in his life, Jones had presented with physical Christian God, courtesy of literally the wrath of God and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. The Ark of the Covenant, that's what it was. My brain was fried there. I knew what I was trying to get to, I knew the scene, I knew where I was from, and I couldn't remember the name. I don't know why. I'm awful with names. And literally Raiders of the Last Ark. He sees the wrath of God enacted upon people because they opened up the Ark of the Covenant. In Temple of Doom, he calls to Shiva. And I'm going to... A Hindu god, Shiva, enacts the power of Shiva onto somebody. He sees people's hearts get ripped out of their chest by magic. Last Crusade, he sees the power of literally the cup of God, Jesus' chalice, whatever you want to say. He sees its magical properties enacted upon people. He sees a man wither to bones and dust because he drank from the wrong cup. He sees a Templar with basically immortality designed only to protect this chalice. He sees the abilities of this cup used on his own dying father. No, he doesn't believe in magic. He doesn't believe in anything great or anything like that. No, no, no. All these things that would basically shock anybody into believing anything. No. Nope, don't believe. Don't believe. I don't believe in magic. I don't believe in none of that. I don't believe in magic. I don't believe in anything at all. Don't believe. You don't believe in things that actually happen to you. Might I also say, 
Doomcock was right. Granted, if you throw spaghetti at the wall a thousand times, eventually you're going to hit something. I think Doomcock's a great dude. I think he gets... He has some very interesting intelligence. Some, A lot of it's bogus, as we have seen, because Kathleen Kennedy is still at Lucasfilm and George Lucas isn't back. But he was right on this one. You gotta, you gotta give it to him. He was right. All signs are pointing to James Mangle is a lying cow, and Doomcock was right the whole time. Now, granted, I had my theories that Doomcock was right because there's an article, and I think it's a uh, post millennial has it. Where they have Doomcocks, no, a tweet from James Mangle, where he's, where somebody quotes tweets him, and it's nobody that big a deal, not check mark, I believe, and he responds to the quote tweet saying, "You must just believe Doomcock and some basement dwelling freaks." When James Mangle is trying to picks out a specific YouTuber in that Doomcock and says, no, what this guy's saying is wrong. You know somebody's onto something. You know when they single somebody out like that and just respond in such vitriol and disdain, you're onto something. Now, are they going to kill off Indy? Still don't know. They probably changed that out. Rumors are test screenies have happened. Mangold said they didn't happen. But test screenings say that the movie's shit. And all I'm thinking is, uh, yeah. Because we got to the last, and I kindly highlighted it from uh, Bounding, because they, they do a very good job with this part. Closing out the trailer with an attempt to at subverting audience expectations. I barely even need this bounding article to tell you what happened, but I'm doing this just because when I say stuff as you have seen, it gets all jumbled up if I don't have at least some guidelines. And you can see a wonderful picture of the results. Meeting with a number of shady figures in a Middle Eastern restaurant, Jones suddenly jumps back from the table and in an attempt to intimidate his opponent begins to crack his whip their direction following a declaration of get back from the archaeologist. The crowd responds to his threats by drawing their own individual firearms, taking aim at Jones and taking aim at Jones. Shocked by the number of barrels, he now finds himself staring down. Jones ends his inversion of Raiders of the Lost Ark infamous duel by ducking down under the table as the crowd opens fire. Very diverse crowd, by the way. Even some, even some ladies have some guns. Anyways. Yeah. You know that? That awesome scene. That literally such a badass moment from Raiders. A moment that I still play in my head because there's all sorts of... We know it's ad-libbed. There's all sorts of reasons for why people say it's ad-libbed. I'm sticking with he wasn't feeling good that day. He had to use the bathroom. Didn't want to go through a huge fight scene and just pop the guy. I like that one. And uh, I, I find it hilarious. But that's what it was. You, you get this dude who's very intimidating. You know, swinging the sword around. Being all cool and stuff. Going like, yeah. And Indy, tired from all the other fights. Harrison just ad-libbing. Th this moment where you kind of laugh. But you're like, yeah, that, that's what would happen in real life. Pulls out his gun and just pops the dude. This moment that kind of like really tells you who Indiana Jones is. Who he is as a person. That 
even he can feel exhaustion. Even he can get just like, I'm tired of this and just done and is not intimidated at all. And just pops the dude. Cause he's like, uh, you have a gun. I have a, I have a gun. You have a sword. You brought the sword to a knife to, you brought the knife to a gunfight. And then what they did here, he literally just starts. When the trailer even plays, it doesn't make sense. Why would you break out your whip and start cracking it in very CGI, like extremely CGI? And you can tell that it's CGI and everything's poorly timed because when the cracks are going off, the whip hasn't even made it to the cracking position. You can tell, you, you just ask yourself, why are you doing this? Cracking your whip wildly at people to try to keep them away. They didn't have their guns out yet. They didn't have anything out yet. You were just like, whoopsh. Right off the bat. Get back. Get back. Then they pull out the guns and you get egg all over your face and you're like, oh my god, I didn't see this coming. Of course you did. I just... I see this movie being a disaster. I do not see it making a billion dollars. And I see this being yet another Kathleen Kennedy branded individual where this was supposed to be her magnum opus, her greatest moment ever, because she didn't get to touch any of these movies before the way she wanted to, the way she thought she deserved to. We saw what she did to Star Wars. She's about to do it to Indiana Jones, and I don't care. To me, Indiana Jones is dead. I don't even need to see this movie. I'm not. I'm lying a little bit because I like Indiana Jones. I I even withstand the Kingdom of the Crystal Stall Skull. I know it's a crap movie. It's a really bad movie. It is what it is, though. I, you can. It's not. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is literally going to look better in comparison to whatever this is about to be. This dog trash that we are about to witness. If you even want to shill out the money to go see it. I don't even know if I'm going to go shill out the movie to go see this. And I am a YouTuber that does reviews and stuff. So Comes out June 30th. Get ready. Get ready for Phoebe Waller Jones, everybody. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Give a comment down below. Share it out with all your friends. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video go live. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.